Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another unboxing. I want to go ahead and start this off by saying thank you very much for Nike and Nike customer service for sending these over to me next day air. I went through a lot to try to get these. I had two separate gift cards in which to purchase these. Initially, I wasn't going to get them, but uh, with the gift cards, I was like, well, it's a foregone conclusion. I definitely want to get these. What happened was I wanted to merge the value of both gift cards so I could purchase these online because I first went to the Rosemont store here in Chicago, Illinois, and they didn't have them naturally. So I went over to Nike Town in Michigan Avenue. They had them, but not in my size. And the size that they had wasn't the colorway that I wanted. So first off, thank you to Nike for taking care of that next day air and applying whatever applicable discounts for the Nike Jordan 32 Low. Initially, I thought the, the look was similar to the two to the point where it looked dated but when I held it in hand and I put it on foot holding it in hand looking at the materials I wasn't that excited but as I put it on foot I realized the comfort I decided that it solidified my decision to actually purchase this model with that being said there'll be a performance review coming up next but first let's get into the unboxing the receipt here thanking me for my order no thank you very much Nike in Arizona for taking their care of that for me what I want to do is get into the shoe itself pretty excited just received them in the mail when i was out front raking the fall leaves and presto here they are can't wait to wear them into the office i got an outfit ready for them the jordan 32 low as you can see right here if you can tell you'll see the fly knit over on top fly knit upper supposed to be more flexible than the than any jordan previously made in the past i'd like to test that out myself to make sure that uh it just so happens that they will be more flexible than the 28s or the 29s because the 29s seem to be the most flexible. In fact, they didn't have any glue up here in the front on the toe box. You'll notice that the idea was for them to make the shoestring disappear into the fly net. I think they're very, very good job at that. And I noticed that my shot's getting a little blurry, but I didn't get a chance to really set up the shot for you guys today that well. Supposedly they fixed up the traction issues. I didn't have any issues regarding traction on my Jordan 31 until they started to get a little bit dated and worn. I realized there was a little bit of slippage in the rear heel portion of it when I would want to stop while uh, having it already accelerated. It looks like they have a cross pattern herringbone going on here, so multi-directional traction. I definitely felt that when I tried them on in store. I'd like to see how they feel. Um, where I'm playing now is a pretty dusty court, so I'll give you a performance review on that as well. You'll notice the 1018 date there for breads, and then you'll see a flight plate right back here. So the flight plate, what they did with it was they tuned it a little bit so that it lays over the air soles a little bit better to give you better responsiveness and better reaction, better recoil when you're landing and jumping. These are made in Italy, so they wanted to use uh, Italian materials. I guess they made some type of molded leather in the past or uh, some type of uh, you know new buck in the past to, to get those together, but here, our heel counter feels like plastic, so that was one of the other reasons why I wasn't too excited initially up until I tried them on. The reason why I chose the lows instead of the highs was simply because the lows seem to be more popular with people when I asked their opinion. So I was like, all right, let's give these a shot. But I felt that the highs did give me a little bit more stability around the ankle lately because I haven't really been strengthening my ankle like I normally do uh, doing various workouts. Um, the same maker of the Jordan 2 made the Jordan 32. And that's going to be Tate Cubris. He actually wanted to make sure that uh, the upper looked seamless. And they did a good job at that, as I mentioned earlier. They got high tenacity yarn in there, so it has zonal lockdown. So what they want to do is they want to take specific areas of the shoe and allow it to be looser. And there was parts of the shoe that are actually meant to be a little bit more firm. So you have specific zones where you can get better lockdown. Essentially, I can't wait to try these out right on court. Hopefully, I'll be able to give you a better, more clear camera view later uh, on these models and a better shot. I'm trying to zoom in for you and kind of clear that up for you. Um, hopefully, I can get a better shot for you later and a much more better in-depth performance review because that's what I'm normally used to doing is the performance reviews. I take my Jordan shoes day one and put them on the basketball court immediately. So that's what I intend to do with this one. No different. Hopefully... I'll be able to give you some cool insight in case you're considering purchasing a pair for yourself. Have a great day.